if you're going to invest internationally, if you're going to be in Canada and spend your money in Cleveland, you need to know who your boots on the ground is going to be, right? You're in Canada. You're going to spend money in Ohio, in America, right? Today, we're going to be talking about a guy from Toronto investing in the Cleveland market. But the stuff I talk about today is, is really geared towards anybody who's in really any part of Canada who's investing in any part of the United States. What you need, what you all need is a boots on the ground team, right? You need Somebody to be your advocate on the ground that knows the U.S. laws, the U.S. real estate market, and can actually act in your behalf. That is what I do. That's what I'm going to do for this guy from Toronto, and I want to walk you through that process. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. My name is James Wise. As I said, folks, I am here to help folks in Canada get involved in the United States real estate market, right? Today, we're specifically working for Hassan. Hassan's an investor from Toronto, right? And Hassan, You've tasked me to build you a multifamily property portfolio in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Now, everybody else out there that's watching this, right? I'm not here to say you have to invest in Cleveland. There's a lot of markets in the United States of America that are attractive to Canadians, right? There's a lot of markets in the U.S. that have more landlord-friendly uh, tenant landlord laws and policies than they do in most parts of Canada. There are a lot of markets in the United States of America where the price to rent ratios are much higher. There are a lot of markets in the United States of America where you can buy properties for a fraction of what you can buy in Canada, right? But the one I'm working with on Hassan, the one I'm going to handle all the on the ground work for is the Cleveland market. And now, Hassan, what I have for you is a property that I believe you can buy for 60 grand and we can get a rent roll, a rent roll, a very high rent roll, brother. I believe we can get up to $1,600 a month in rent. $1,600 in rent for a $60,000 property. And here's the thing. The reason I think we can get such a good deal is because I'm your advocate. I am going to be there every step of the way fighting these sellers striking them whenever they make a mistake, a mistake that should cost them thousands and in turn make it for you. And right now I'm going to go over this property and all the things they did wrong and all the ways you and I are going to take advantage of that so you can hit the returns you seek. Welcome back, folks. I love this. I love this property because the seller has screwed it up. They are doing this as wrong as you can do it. And when they make a mistake, we capitalize, right? Because I work for you. I don't work for them. Okay, here's what we got. This is a duplex in Cleveland, Ohio. Just hit the market a day ago. $90,000 is what they're asking for it. 3859 West 36 Cleveland, 4 for 109. This is in an area I call the Metro Health area. Love this area, right? Currently, it's about a D grade area. What you want to do is put Section 8 tenants in there. But I believe not all D grade areas are created equal. No, no, no. I think in the Cleveland market, there ain't no shortage of D grade areas in Cleveland. That's for show. Now, this one. This market, this I'm pointing to it over here like y'all could see. <laughs> this one, this is my favorite D-grade market, right? Why? Because Metro Health, 
They're putting a billion dollars. Be like boy. Be like blue. Be like Billy Badass Motherfucker. Be like Billy Gunn. Y'all ever watch Billy Gunn, man? Dude, he was crushing it in WWE in, like, the late 90s when he was on DX. You know, suck it. And now the motherfucker's, like, 58 years old, still jacked on AEW. Woo! Nothing to do with real estate, though, so let's tie it back to real estate. Okay, so this property. Billion dollars in the neighborhood. Be like boy. Be like badass Billy Gunn, okay? In addition to that, it is next to Tremont Gordon Square, uh, Ohio City, right? So these are the areas where you see a ton of appreciation, a ton of gentrification. What do you think when Metro Health, what do you think is going to happen when Metro Health invests a billion dollars over there, right? There's just a ton of cash, like huge amounts of cash, cash that like regular everyday investors like us could never come close to like getting like a, a, a speck of, right? Billion dollars? I mean, come on, right? So huge institutional amounts of cash are being pumped into this neighborhood. So if you're going to bet on an area in Cleveland where I'm expecting there to be appreciation, this is the neighborhood, right? So you buy now for cash flow, and hopefully you can get your cake and eat it too later. You know who doesn't eat cake? Badass Billy Gunn, because that guy's 58, still crushing it on AEW. This video has nothing to do with that, though. So let's get back to real estate. Now, I love the area. The price is like fine under a normal basis. And that's what leads me to what I was talking about at the top of the show. The seller is doing this as wrong as they can do it. <laughs> They're screwing this whole thing up, right? They're doing this so friggin' wrong. It's hilarious, honestly. All right, so here's the property. We got two tenants in there, okay? By the way, this is important. You see this? This is all peeling paint, right? They're getting big on lead paint in the city of Cleveland, right? Every two years now, rental property owners are going to have to get uh, their properties lead inspected. This right here, this is going to be a problem. Eventually, you're going to need to uh, vinyl side this, right? I'm going to put that in your upfront bid, though. We're going to build that into the price. And they got two tenants living here, okay? And as you can see, there's just a ton of crap. And, and these two tenants, <coughs> how these people are handling the tenants is why they did this so wrong. Like, they're just, they got... They just did this so dumb, okay? So you got all your tenants, all your mechanicals. One of them furnaces, the one in the attic, they said it was 25 years old, okay? Those typically last 30 years, cost about three grand. But let's talk about those tenants, because that's where they screwed the pooch, okay? They put this on the market now, and then they gave us the rents that the tenants are currently paying. And then I in the private notes that you can't access, you have to be a broker to access those. I access those notes from the listing agent, and they're telling me, hey, the tenants are great, the tenants pay on time, Awesome tenants. And then the very next sentence, by the way, we just gave both tenants a 30-day notice to vacate. What? Okay. So you're telling me the tenants pay on time and they're awesome, but then you told me even though they're paying you, you said, nope, you can't live here anymore, right? There are certain neighborhoods, there are certain areas where owner occupancy is going to drive the pricing of the properties. This ain't one of them. This is a neighborhood where the tenants are of value. This property with paying tenants, much more valuable than this property without paying tenants, much more valuable than properties with tenants who need to be evicted. So if the tenants are great and they're good, there would be no reason for you to give them a notice because you're losing money that way both in the rent coming in and people don't want to pay for it anymore because this is not an area where you get a lot of owner-occupants buying it, right? And secondly, if you were trying to target those owner-occupants, you'd put it on the market as soon as the tenants actually moved out, right? So these people have shot themselves in the foot, right? They've taken all – there's only two kinds of buyers. There's people that want to live in the house, and there's people that want a cash flow investment property, okay? Well, they've taken this property and made it unattractive to people that want to buy it for cash flow. Hey, here's this property. Here's the tenants. They're awesome, but we're kicking them out. Okay, well, that makes no sense. Obviously, they're horrible tenants, most likely. Or maybe you are kicking them out because you really think you could sell it to an owner-occupant. Then why in the hell would you put it on the market now instead of when the tenants are actually gone? So... People that want to buy the property for rental income, they don't want it because the rental income's about to go away. People that want to buy the property so they can live there, they don't want it either because they can't get in and see the freaking property and there's tenants crap all over it and they don't know when the tenants are actually going to move out. The whole thing is a mess. It's a nightmare. Because of all that, I see no scenario 
where they're going to get 90000 Who the hell is going to pay 90000 for this right now? Owner occupants, oh, they don't want it. Rental property investors, well, what the hell would you buy it for? You're just buying a problem at this point, right? We don't, nothing wrong with buying a problem if you could price it correctly. So I believe the true value here, we could try to pick this up at 60. Will they accept 60 today? Probably not. They're lunatics. They obviously don't know what they're doing. They're thinking they can get 90 in its current situation when they've done everything completely wrong, right? If I'm them, best thing to do, if the tenants really are good, you don't notice the tenants, you keep the tenants in there, they're paying market rent, you sell it to rental property investors. Boom, bing, bing, boom, 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 done. All right, you get 90, probably 100, actually. You probably get 100 that way. Done, no problem. They should have did that. They didn't, okay? Maybe it would be wrong. But maybe they thought they could sell it to owner occupants. Fine. Remove the fucking tenants, clean up their shit, and then fucking sell it empty. They didn't do that either. They don't know what the fuck they're doing, okay? So I think 60 is the real price. Reason being, once these people are out, you're going to have to redo both of their units, okay? So you're going to put some money into that. Let's factor in about 10000 per unit. It's hard to tell exactly what we'll need because there's so much crap in there right now, but we'll go 10 a unit. That puts us at 20. Then I told you uh, we had the peeling paint, right? Let me pull that back up. That's super big, right? This is definitely a lead-based paint hazard, right? This house was built like 100 years ago. The peeling paint on the outside, that'll be a problem, right? So the best way to take care of this, you can go cheaper. You could scrape it and repaint it, but you'll have to do it again in a few years. Just bite the bullet. Spend about 10 grand. Vinyl side the whole house, okay? So that's what I'm thinking. We put 30 into the house. So you can pick it up at 60, put 30 in, you're all in for 90. We get two new market rent tenants in there paying 850 and 750. That's 16 hundo. That should pencil out to approximately 795 a month, just under 10 for the year. It's truly worth 100k at that point. So we go ahead and burr the sucker back out. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Right? All in for 90. Get it to appraise at 100. That means the bank gives us back 75. We only have 15 tied into the deal. We'd be looking at a cool 38% return. But that whole thing will be based upon us being able to pick it up for 60 because you'd be batshit crazy to pay 90. So I think the offer 60. But here's the thing. They just put it on the market a day ago. They obviously don't know what the hell they're doing, right? They, got their, they don't know their fucking head from their elbow from their asshole, right? So will they accept 60 today? Probably not. But, <clears throat> folks, this is a numbers game. This is real estate investing, right? You don't get every property you offer on, right? Think of yourself as a commercial fisherman, right? You got nets. You got lines in the water. The more lines, the more nets, the more fish you're going to catch. Do you catch all the fish? No, but you got to throw stuff out there. You got to throw it at the wall and see what sticks. In my career, in my business, right, I am shooting out offer after offer after offer after offer. And you know what? Do all of them come back to me? No, but a certain percentage of them will. So this is one, you throw it out there, maybe in 30 days they come back, maybe in 60 days they come back, maybe in six months they come back, maybe they never come back, but you don't know unless you shoot your shot, folks, okay? If we could pick it up at 60, would be a great deal, and I see no scenario where they're going to get their price point of 90 because they have done everything possible to screw up this listing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.